Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So we just finished discussing the citric acid cycle and the breakdown of carbohydrates. So now we're going to start discussing the breakdown of the, um, of the fats, of the lipids. So we're going to be discussing fatty acid catabolism. So let's just jump right on in. Okay, so the oxidation of fatty acids, so the oxidation of fatty acids to acetyl-CoA. So you notice that fatty acids are also catabolized to acetyl-CoA, just like the pyruvate was that entered the citric acid cycle. So it's broken down into acetyl-CoA, and these acetyl-CoAs actually enter the citric acid cycle. So the oxidation of fatty acids to acetyl-CoA is a major source of energy for organisms. Of energy for organisms. In fact, it's probably the major source. Okay, complete oxidation. So complete oxidation of fatty acids. I'll just go ahead and abbreviate it as FAs releases about 40 kilojoules per gram. 40 kilojoules per gram. So for a gram of fat, it releases about 40 kilojoules of heat. That's a lot of energy. Um, more than twice that released by an equal mass of either protein or carbohydrate. Equal mass of protein or carbohydrate. Protein or carbohydrate. Okay. Now, vertebrate cells. Vertebrate cells obtain the fatty acids that they need obtain FAs for catabolism from three sources. In other words, the fatty acids that the cell needs uh, in order to burn, to get energy, they come from three different sources. There are three ways that the fatty acids get to the cells in, otherwise, in other words. So one of them is diet. What you eat, it finds its way directly to the cells. Two is fats stored in cells. The fats that are stored in cells already. So sometimes it'll just mobilize those fats that are already there and use them for breakdown. And the third way is the fats that are synthesized by one organ, synthesized by one organ, then transported to the tissues that need them. Then transported to the tissues that need them. Okay, so let's talk about diet first. So number one, uh, one, diet. Okay, so dietary fats <clears throat> are absorbed by the small intestine. Are absorbed by the small intestine. So now we'll just go ahead and list how it actually does this. Um, in your biochemistry books, there's probably some illustration or of some sort that talks about how it goes from the intestine, how it gets here. You're more than welcome to look at it. In fact, I encourage you to take a look at it. What I'm going to do here, I'm not really going to be using any diagrams. I'm just going to be listing the process. Um, it's important to know what happens, but we want to concentrate on the second one, the fats that are stored in cells, how those fats are actually mobilized. And that's, what we're, that's when we're going to be looking at diagrams 
in pictures and following reactions very carefully. So dietary fats are absorbed by the small intestine, and it happens as follows. So bile salts emulsify dietary triacylglycerols. Triacylglycerols. So triacylglycerol, just fat. The fat that you ingest, you're ingesting it as triacylglycerols. The bile salts that the body secretes actually emulsifies them. Okay. Now, two. Lipase enzyme. Lipase enzymes. They break down these triacylglycerols, which I will abbreviate as TAGs to monoacylglycerols, diacylglycerols, free fatty acids. So free fatty acid, those are just the long chain carboxylic acids. We just call them free fatty acids. And glycerol. And glycerol. Okay. Now, these breakdown products, so number three, these breakdown products, they're what's actually absorbed by the intestine. These breakdown products are absorbed by the intestine. Okay, now, number four. These products, these breakdown products, well, <clears throat> write that again. These breakdown products are reconverted back to the triacylglycerols. Are reconverted back to the triacylglycerols then these TAGs are combined with cholesterol cholesterol esters and <clears throat> excuse me and specific proteins into particles called chylomicrons. Called chylomicrons. And there's certainly, there's a picture of a chylomicron in your book. So these triacylglycerols that are, re that are reformed, they com they're combined with cholesterol and the esters of cholesterol. So cholesterol ester, uh, cholesterol ester is actually an ester of cholesterol. And these specific proteins, they're sort of combined into this particle. So the proteins are on sort of the outside of it. And these particles are called chylomicrons. Okay, so I want to say a word about these specific proteins. Now, these proteins, these specific proteins are called apolipoproteins and they are responsible for actually transporting the lipids through the bloodstream because fats as you know are not water soluble so they can't just float around in in the blood or in the lymph um, they have to be they have to be solubilized if you will by these proteins so the protein they attach to proteins and the proteins carry them to where they need to be so these specific proteins are called apolipoproteins and they are responsible for transporting for transporting insoluble lipids through the bloodstream and lymphatic system.
K. One of these proteins, APOC2, is an example. Is an example. That's the name of it, APOC2.